Before I go into the message today, the title of the message this morning is the power and the influence of a mother's faith. The power and the influence of a mother's faith. Before we go into the message, I'd like to read to you what great men have said about their encounter with their own mothers. Abraham Lincoln said a one time U.S. president, all that I am or hope to be, I hope to my angel mother. I uh, believe Graham, who went home to be with the Lord a couple of weeks ago, said, The influence of a mother upon the lives of her children cannot be measured. How do you measure it? How do you measure the time of prayer, of investment, of counseling, of going to school, picking up the children, going to Nanny's place, driving the children to swimming pool, to every place, extra moral activities? And schools, how do you measure them? Judge Washington said, I attribute all my success in life to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I receive from my mother. Just Potion said, I cannot tell you how much I owe to the solemn word of my good mother. Someone said something quite interesting, Thomas Fuller. If you're looking for a wife, take the daughter of a good mother. Guys, maybe that's a clue. Billy Graham said, for that, of all the people I have ever known, my mother had the greatest influence on me. I'm sure one reason that the Lord has directed and safeguarded me, as well as Ruth and the children, through the years was the prayers of my mother. Thank God for praying mothers. He said, what a comfort it was for me to know that no matter where I was in the world, my mother was praying for me. No matter where I was in the world, my mother was praying for me. Today, I'd like us to look at uh, the life of a young man called Timothy and what his mother did to influence him to be a world changer in his own days. The influence of the mother of Timothy on him. I'd like us to open up the scripture to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We read from verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. That's the message on his own day. To Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience and my forefathers, as my forefathers did. As without season, I remember you in my prayers night and day. That's Paul writing to Timothy. Greatly desiring to see you, be mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, we dwell first in your grandmother Louise and your mother Eunice and I'm persuaded it's in you also quite interesting we see three generations here the grandmother the mother and the son three generations and interestingly the grandmother passed something to the mother that's Louise to Eunice but Eunice made up her mind that what was given to her would not die with her. And Eunice made up her mind to invest what was imparted to her upon her own child, Timothy. In other words, Eunice was not self-centered, 
was not preoccupied by the business of life. Eunice was not preoccupied by self-centeredness and activities that could distract a person. Eunice said to herself, I am a debtor. I owe something to Timothy that I must pass on to Timothy. And Eunice made sure that while she was here, she imparted Timothy with something that we read about. The genuine faith, the Bible calls it the, the unfeigned faith. In other words, the unadulterated faith. In other words, the faith that cannot be subdued. In other words, the faith that cannot be conquered. In other words, the faith that is always at the top of circumstances. It's not talking about any faith yet. It's not talking about uh, just any, any wishy-washy. Uh, Lord, I believe you when things are rosy. And uh, when things are not rosy, Lord, I don't know what to do. Now, no. The Bible says you need imparted something to Timothy that sustained Timothy through the ages. And the Bible describes it as genuine faith. I read that scripture and I read it again. And I read it again. And I said, if there is a faith, if there is faith that is genuine, then there will be faith that is counterfeit. There will be faith that is adulterated. There will be faith that, is, that cannot stand the test of time. But what Paul saw in Timothy was the faith that was in the grandmother that was passed on to the mother and that was revealed in Timothy. Will you help me appreciate all the mothers in this house? Whatever was given to Eunice did not die with Eunice. She passed it on. She make sure that Whatever she owed Timothy, she released to Timothy. And it's very important, mothers in this place. Whatever God has given you to impart your children with, don't die with it. Whatever God has given you to transform your children with, don't withhold from your children. Some of you, God has given you the gift of words. Use words, words of life to build up your children. Tell them you are great. You are necessary. You are important. You are the head, not the tail. Above you are, not under. Tell them the significance and the relevance and the importance and the uniqueness of their being. Use your word. Use your word to validate your children. Don't use your word. Don't curse your children. Don't curse your children. So of course are dealing with issues today as a result of the pronouncement from our ancestral lineage. Don't curse your children. Whatever gift God has given to you that you know belongs to your children. You are like a bank evolved that God has hidden the treasure into for you to open it up and deposit it to your children. Make sure whatever you owe them does not die with you. Pass it on to them. Encourage them. Strengthen them. Minister to them. A child who is not affirmed, hear this, a child who is not affirmed by his or her parents will bear any identity. But a child who has been told by mama when the bullies rise up against that child to destroy the image of that child, that child says, no, I don't agree with you. You have your opinion. But my opinion that mama taught me, which is in the word of God, I hold on to it. I hold on to it. And so, as we celebrate you today, mothers, you also have responsibility. Respons you may be here and tell the pastor, all oh, my children are grown up, they've left home. No, it's not too late. You may be here and say, Pastor, I don't even, I'm not even married. Yeah, you, one day you get married, it's not too late. You may be here and say, Pastor, 
uh, um, look, I've been married, but I don't have children. No, 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 no. It's not too late. There are people around you. There are children around you that you must discover. And invest what God has given you to them. Oh my God, you have the telephone, you have the iPad, you have the Facebook, you have the Twitter. And use those means to build up your children. Send text. Send while they are in university, send text. Son, daughter, I am praying for you. Son, daughter, I believe in you. You will excel. You will succeed. You will make it. You will break through in life. You will not fail. You will not fall. That is no child that will hear such words and still despise his own appearance. It's not possible. It's not possible. The Bible said, Paul saw in Timothy faith that was genuine, which the grandmother passed to the mother and consequently reached Timothy. In other words, something that your values that your parents live by and saw those values replicated in you. Saw those values in you that your parents live by. In order to have a clear background of this scripture, Timothy was born to a Greek man who is an unbeliever by a Jewish believer a Jewish believer married an unbeliever. I don't know the historical background behind it. But you may be here today and say, I'm a single parent. The scripture is telling you, even being single parents, you could make a lot of impact on your children. Being a single parent. Being a single parent is not a license to fold your arms and not influence or impact or challenge or invest in the lives of your children. I could imagine when Timothy was growing up, a young man born to a Greek father and a Jewish believer mother, a Jewish believing mother. I could imagine the scorn and the irritations and, and the challenges that, that Eunice went through. When she was raising Timothy, I could imagine that in school, people pulled the jackets of Timothy and said, look, Timothy, your father is not even a Jewish believer. Your father is an unbeliever. I, I could imagine the, how the bullies, they, they tortured him. But it's in the midst of that, in the midst of that negative environment, in the midst of that uncertainty, in the midst of that challenge that Eunice decided to do something to influence the destiny of her son Timothy. No wonder if you read in 2 Timothy chapter 1 around verses 6 to 7 the Bible talk about I used to wonder many 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 years that look God has not given you the spirit of fear but of power love and son might know. You see Paul was addressing something in the life of Timothy. Because the environment where Timothy grew up subdued him, oppressed him, challenged him, marginalized him. And Paul is saying, that is something in you, son. That is a gift that was placed upon you when I lay hands on you. Sear up that gift. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. Don't allow the opinion of people steal away your destiny. Do allow the opinion of people take away what God has said concerning you. And so, Eunice decided to partner with God. Because she realized that inside a son was a treasure, a gift, a potential. Unique opportunity inside every one of your children, there are treasures. Oh my god, their behaviors may not seem like it, but there is something on the inside of them that you have responsibility to uncover. Okay, you are not hearing me. Inside your children, their behaviors may not look like it at the moment, but inside each one of your children. Is locked up the seed of greatness. Each side of them is locked up the power to influence their generation. 
Inside them is locked up the power to rule, the power to reign, the power to change the world. Inside them is locked up the values and the virtues and the power and the potential that will bring about hope to humanity. Inside them. And don't you look at your children and despise them. And don't you look at your children and say, there's nothing about you. That's nothing special. Don't you, don't you ever, ever, ever do that. Your responsibility to take off your jacket, roll your sleeve, and begin to uncover the gifts, the treasure, the potential, the ability, the grace, the strength, the wisdom that is locked up on the inside of your children. Maybe you are here today. Hear me. Maybe you are here today, um, when you were growing up, you grew up under a very, very hostile environment. Some of us even didn't grow up with our parents. And so we were subject to hatred, hatred of highest degree. Negative words were spoken on us. I declare the power of those words are broken right now. Everything that was said about you to destroy your destiny, I cancel those things right now. In the name of Jesus, each one of you, you will fulfill destiny. Each one of you, you will fulfill purpose. Each one of you, you will fulfill the counsel and the mandate of God. Each one of you, you will reach where God has destined for you to be. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Tendencies are when a person is exposed to abuse. Challenge tendencies are they replicate that abuse in others. And don't you ever do that. Don't you ever do that. Whatever they did to you that was negative, end day, it must not go beyond you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Inside Timothy was locked up greatness. But the mama said, even though the environment was hostile, even though they called me by all sorts of names, I'm going to make sure I give my child the attention that is required. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, the, 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 the father couldn't give Timothy the attention because he's an unbeliever. What have you got to offer? But I, I thank God for the life of Eunice. Who we'll walk in wisdom. She did not despise her husband. She did not uh, uh, use words to frustrate her husband. But she walked in wisdom. Exceptional wisdom. That even though the environment, you have no idea. They're living together. Father, not born again. Mother, born again. Which way will the child go? Which way? But she worked in exceptional wisdom to make sure she navigated the destiny of this child to focus on Christ. Say, Lord, give me wisdom. If you find yourself, you are married to an unbeliever, just stay there. Don't break your relationship because the grace and the glory that is upon you covers your family. Amen. But you can pray. You can pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me share with you exactly what Eunice did to turn the destiny of Timothy around. What did he do? What did she do? What did she do? Go with me in your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We read from verse 14. But you must remain faithful to the things which you have been taught. That was Paul writing to Timothy. You know they are true. The things which you have been taught, who taught you? They have been true. For you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the holy scriptures. From when? From when? Now, the papa wasn't born again. The only person who would have thought Timothy from the child from childhood was the mother, Eunice. You have been taught the Holy Scripture from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes 
by trusting in Christ Jesus. The understanding of the scripture gave Timothy the insight, the wisdom to access what salvation has to offer humanity. And so, because of the exposure to the word of God, Timothy knows very clearly how to access what grace provided. Praise the name of the Lord. I can imagine Eunice opening up the scripture to Timothy, teaching him and encouraging him to live a life that honors God from the, from the childhood from the childhood this woman invested in the life of a son this woman invested God this woman rolled a sleeve this woman this woman paid the price he paid the price I can imagine Juni say all scriptures all scripture is inspired by God and it's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our life as parents Hear me, church. Your number one priority is to teach your children the word of the living God. Number one, you number one, you have no option. Your number one priority is to teach, expose your children to the word of God because in that word is the life, the life that your children need. And that life is the light of men. In that word is a victory. Is a breakthrough, their opportunity, their strength, their identity. In that world is the ways of God, the will of God. Your responsibility is to show your children the counsel of God by opening up the scriptures to them. Your responsibility is to the same way you go about your life scheduling events and meetings and and uh, 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 everything that you do nine, nine to two this is what you do uh, two to three this is what you do also make time to schedule time for your children and do Bible study and do Bible study with your children your children should see you studying the scripture they should see you pray serving God and serving the purpose of God. Your children should see you there. I want to encourage you, church. I want to encourage you, invest, invest, invest in the lives of your children. Invest, invest. Your children will be here to face the life battle even when you are not there. And it is what you put in them that will help them to stand when they have to confront issues of life. When you cannot defend them. Open the word of God. Teach them the word. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, you are busy. Yes, you come back late. Yes, you have to go for this meeting. You have to go for that meeting. For Christ's sake. For Christ's sake. Open. Open the word. Open the word. Make time. Make time. With time, there was a, a WhatsApp clips that somebody sent to me. I didn't even know who sent it to me. But I just saw it. I, I clicked on it and it was quite interesting. It was a gentleman, uh, a professional who was quite busy with his work. And uh, came home one day and his wife was excited. They're they going to be going for dinner tonight. And the guy said, uh, no, no, not dinner. He, he was going back to the office. And he went to the office, just left the wife. The wife was pregnant at the time, but he didn't know. And of course, the wife got confused, jumped in the car, drove the car, had an accident, died. The baby in the womb died. And the police had to call the guy and say, they're sorry to inform him that he just lost his wife. Then he started crying. I wonder if I could enter into that thing and slap his face. You had the opportunity to celebrate this woman. You had the opportunity. You did know. What cry are you crying? Who are you fooling? Who are you fooling? This is what he said. Life is not a rehearsal. Life is real. 
Life is real. Whatever you don't put in your children today, don't expect that that thing will suddenly grow, will suddenly manifest without your involvement. Don't expect. Don't expect. You have the opportunity to plant seed, to sow seed, to nurture, to encourage, to help your children to follow the admonitions of the Lord. You have the opportunity. So Eunice invested in Timothy. They studied the word. They confessed the word. They looked through the word. No wonder the Bible said this guy grew up and there was something unique about him. It was called unique faith. Unfailing faith. Genuine faith. Unadulterated. Faith that does not submit to problem. Faith before whom challenges of life bout. Faith that is strong. Faith that is resolute. Faith that is unbreakable. Faith that the enemy cannot conquer. No wonder. Because you see, faith comes by your hearing. And hearing by the word of God. These guys had been built up in the house by the word of life. By the word of God. And when they grew up, the only thing that was evident in this life was faith that cannot be subdued. We have the responsibility. Let me give you the impact of Eunice's sacrifice on Timothy. Eight of them. The first one is unfeigned faith. I just described that to you. The second one is Timothy grew up as a disciple. A disciple of Christ. A disciple that was following Paul to advance the purpose of God. How, how beautiful would that sound? That when you hear of your children, you have good news that they are doing exploit for God. They are advancing the purpose of God. They are touching lives. That they don't get involved in those things that break the heart of parents. They don't get involved in smoking, in drinking, in partying. They get involved in making sure that the kingdom of God advances. How, how amazing would that be if that's what you hear about your children? In Acts chapter 16, from verse 1, the Bible says that then he came to Derby and Lystra, that was Paul, Paul and Silas actually, and behold, a certain disciple was there. A certain disciple was there. Ah, my God, this was a result of the impact and the influence of Eunice on Timothy. This guy grew up to be a disciple. A disciple is someone who follows the footsteps that have been laid down. A disciple of Christ, a person who follows after Christ, who walks after the will of God, a person who promotes the agenda of God, the agenda and the purpose of Christ. A disciple of Christ was there and the name was Timothy. The son of a certain Jewish woman who believed. The son of a woman who is a Jewish woman who believed but his father was a Greek man, a Greek person. Even though we had those contradictions, the Greek and the Jewish, but somehow the child emerged to be a disciple because of the influence of the mother. In verse 2, which is your number 3, Timothy had a good commendation. Good commendation. He was well brought up by the mama. By mama. He was well nurtured by mama. In verse 2 of Acts chapter 16, he was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Mama instilled in Timothy moral values and godly characters. Timothy was very, very well mannered. He respected everyone around him and they respect him. He was faithful. He was reliable. He was dependable. He was committed and available to serve the purpose of God because of what Mama did. Because of what Mama did. In Acts chapter 16, verse 3, 
You're number four now. Timothy joined Paul's missionary team. Timothy was not just a disciple who had no mission. He now became a missionary. A missionary who goes about to speak of the goodness of the Lord and to declare the message of grace to his generation. Oh boy, do we need missionaries in our world today? Oh yes, we do. We do need missionaries. Every religion has their own missionaries. The Muslims are there. The Buddhists are there. The, uh, uh, the Satanists are there. They, they, they recruit people everywhere you go. I remember some time ago I was in, uh, I was in Canada. And uh, very interestingly, the, 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 the Muslim, the other store, big store like this, quite, quite big store. They were giving away free books, free books, and of, of course, opportunity to convert people to um, uh, uh, Islam. Free books, they were given. Uh, Islam is the way. Islam join us, and you were just screaming and shouting. And this thing broke my heart, and I saw the stall of the Christian. It was manned by two very old ladies like this. Very, very, their tracks were so small. So small that almost un unnoticeable. And they were timid. But these Muslim guys were vocal. They were loud. They were shouting. They were screaming. And of course, they got attention of people. They got attention of people. And I saw what is going on in the world. What's going on in the world. If I see my son evangelizing, oh my God, I will fall on my knees and worship God. I will worship God. Because for that purpose, we exist. For that purpose, we live. To bring, the, Jesus said, oh my God, he was speaking to the apostle. He said, the, the, the harvest is great. But the laborers are few. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Then I said, you and you and you and you and you. Pray. Pray. That's the state of our world today. Great harvest, few laborers. Pray that the Lord, not that what God is waiting on us to do something. Pray that the Lord, the God of the harvest, who send laborers into his harvest. I pray to God. This Timothy became a missionary, not just a disciple, a missionary, influencing, advancing the purpose of God because of what Mama taught. Number five, churches begin to grow because of the influence of Timothy, which was the result of the influence of Eunice. In verse five, of Acts chapter 16. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. They increased in numbers daily. Daily. Oh my God. What joy would that be to heaven if as a result of the impact of your children churches are just growing. Are just growing. I just grow. If every day of the service, your children bring 20 people to church, 30 people to church every single day of the service, your children are influencing, they're campaigning for Christ. They become an agent of Christ out there. How glad, how, how, how grateful will you be to God? But this was as a result of the price that the mama paid. Mama paid. Number six, Timothy emerged as a caring leader. He wasn't just a missionary, he became a leader. A leader. A leader who cares. We have a lot of leaders who don't care. But this guy is a leader who cares. In Philippians 2, from verse 19, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your things. Your state. Verse 20. For I have no one like-minded. I, I, Paul said, 
in my in my whole experience, there is just no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. Paul relied on Timothy because somebody paid the price. A woman paid the price. Paul relied on Timothy. Praise the name of the Lord. Number seven, Timothy emerged as a trusted teacher. He was a teacher. Look at the qualities that this guy developed because somebody invested in him. He became a teacher, he's a leader, a missionary. He's all in all. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, as I urge you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. The only person Paul can depend on to make sure that the church is built on the foundation of Christ was Timothy. The only person. The only person. He emerged as a trusted teacher who would do exactly what the word of God says. Because there are many teachers in the world who wants to preach. They want to preach what the itching ears are asking for. They just want to preach any sermon. They want to, they want to preach what is not in the world. But Paul said, the church that we just founded in Ephesus, you see what to go there and make sure that no doctrine that is contrary to the gospel is preached in that church. Number eight, the final number, Timothy also emerged as a faithful leader. He was a leader. He was, isn't that amazing? A missionary, a disciple, a disciple, a missionary, a teacher, a caring leader, a trusted leader, all because of the influence of mama. Today we celebrate all the mothers in this house. That is where I see you. I see each one of you in the light of Eunice. Inside your children, each one of your children is locked up Timothy. Inside each one of them. I want to encourage you. Go and discover that Timothy. That Timothy must step out of the depth of the spirit of your children and step into our world today. And step into our world. Boy, do we need missionaries? Do we need uh, uh, caring leaders? Do we need trusted leaders? Do we need disciples? Do we need people who carry on faith, faith? Who will not bow to alternatives? But who are ready to do exactly what the word of God says. I challenge you mothers in this place. The hope of the next generation is firmly in your hands. The future of the next generation is in your hands. I, there's something I learned over many years ago that I, I challenged my children with when they were growing up. I have meetings with them, me, mama, the children. I said, this is one thing I'd like to leave with you. In fact, I can repeat that thing 10 times a day. Every, in fact, they know it so well. When they are sleeping, they can articulate it. I said, you pay now. Yeah? Then play later. You pay. You sacrifice now. The Maxwell actually taught us. You sacrifice now. Pay. Pay. Go through the pain. Go through the orders, the challenge. Give it what it takes now so that you can play. You can go to Hawaii, the Honolulu. You can travel the world, the Seychelles, the Mauritius. You can go to Hong Kong, the Malaysia, the Penang. You can go everywhere after you have paid. But there are some foolish people. They want to... Uh, <laughs> You want to play now? You want to play and they still want to play later. It doesn't happen. If you have used that card now, the one that remains that you could use is to pay. 
Everybody in life is given two cards. One is pay, one is play. If you use the first one first to pay, then the only one left with you is to play and enjoy and nobody will restrict you. I pray you will find reasons to cooperate with God to unlock the destiny, the greatness, the power that is locked up on the inside of your children. So you too can play later. God bless you. Just lift up your hands, all the mothers, and ask God for the grace. Ask God for the grace. The grace to discover everything that is locked up on the inside of your children. Grace to raise up your children for God in this compromising world. Grace to build up in your children the unfeigned faith. Grace to be a difference maker. Father, upon all the mothers in this place and those who are watching via the internet, we unleash the power of your grace. Grace. Father God, that is triggered by commitment. Grace that will enable every mother in this place, every father. Lord, Pay the price required, the investment required to unlock the treasure that is on the inside of their children. That the children may, may, may be raised up for God just as Timothy to influence their world according to the will of God. I speak over your children today. Each one of us in this place. Our children will be mighty on the earth. Our children will be a light to their generation. Our children will be difference maker to their generation. Our children will rule and they will reign in their generation. Our children will not be subdued in the name of Jesus. They will walk in the fullness of the purpose of God for their lives. In the name of Jesus, they will always be the head and not the tail. They will be above and not under. We'll declare all our children they will be thought by the Lord and great will be their peace. Father, we thank you for our children in this house of God. In the name of Jesus, each time we hear of them, it will be good news. I will hear good news from them. We we'll declare there will be children with unfaith faith. There will be leaders of leaders. There will be influencers to their generation. In the name of Jesus, your children are blessed. They are blessed and they will be a blessing to their own generation. In the name of Jesus. 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 Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we honor you. Thank you. If there is anyone with a wayward child, a child that is gone astray, Father God, we thank you because your arms are not short that you cannot save. We ask you to reach out, reach out to those children who God and bring them back on course. They may follow after your counsel and after your will. In the name of Jesus, our children will not be lost. They will not be wasted, O God. Our children will serve the purpose of God in their generation according to the will of God. Father, we bless your holy name. And we appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We hope you have been blessed by this message today. For more details, visit our website, newwine.co.uk. You can email church at newwine.co.uk. Connect with us on Facebook at New Wine London or follow us on Twitter, also at New One London. New One Church, where you're valued, not numbered.